Right now, as I speak, millions and millions of drivers are saving money on their car insurance with GEICO. If you're one of those drivers, well done. If you're not, it's easy to join them. Visit GEICO.com today. Joining us now on the line, somebody who knows a little bit about quarterbacks, is longtime college and NFL coach, Ted Tolner. Ted, welcome to the show. You're on with Bruce and Mark. Thank you. Pleasure to be on. Hey, Coach Bruce Benkowski here. Uh, 1981, I believe, that is the year you coached at uh, Brigham Young University. Uh, So you have a rather intimate working knowledge with the likes of Jim McMahon and others. Tell us about Jim McMahon, who was known as a character then and all through his college uh, and pro days. But what kind of a quarterback and a team leader was he? Well, I was very fortunate. I was there a short time at BYU, but we had Jim McMahon and Steve Young, so they could make coaches look look a lot better. But, you know, and and I understand you just talked to us, to Steve, but Jim and Steve were kind of on – Different, and they were both great players. And, and Jim, it just it almost came natural to him. I mean, he had unbelievable vision and competitiveness in the game. And you know, he, he wasn't like he liked to study the game, but he just knew it. You know, sometimes we we'd have a play, and he would get the open guy. It was third progression. We say, Jim, how'd you know that? And, and he just said, I could see it. The coverage was all going over here, so I knew I had to go over here. And then there's other guys like Steve. <laughs> he would know exactly, well, because they were in cover two, I'm supposed to go from here to here to here. Well, Jim didn't get too caught up in what the coverage was. He just knew if they were if they were playing a certain way that somebody else was going to be open. But he was a delight to coach because he, he was so competitive. He hated to lose. He fired up everybody. And, he, and at that time, he still had his feet were good. He could run and hurt you. He could hurt you with his arm. And, and he, could, he just hurt you so many ways and inspired all of his teammates. Now, since we're talking about Holiday Bowl, BYU, Hall of Fame quarterbacks, along the way in your long coaching career, did you ever run across Robbie Bosco uh, or Ty Detmer in any of your travels? Very much. I mean, Rob, Robbie Bosco, actually, I was, the year I was at BYU when we had uh, Steve and Jim, during the recruiting, I was re- involved in recruiting Robbie because he was a Northern California guy. and So I got involved in the recruiting, and then after the recruiting season was over, I left and I went to USC and – and so, yeah, very much so. And then, you know, you mentioned Ty Detmer. In all the years, we played teams that he was on because he had a 13-, 14-year uh, career in the NFL. So it was a number of times we played against his teams. He wasn't always the starter. Very rarely was he that. But he, he was a great uh, member of every team he was on. But then last January, I coached the Under Armour uh, High School All-American team in Orlando. And Ty, we had Ty's quarterback. Ty's coaching in Texas now. And so Ty came up, and so we rode to the game together on the bus, and we're reminiscing about Holiday Bowl and BYU and NFL. But just neat, neat guys. I mean, all the names you're mentioning. Not only were they quarterbacks that were, you know, had they were the statistical leaders or in the Heisman Trophy race, but they were all really quality guys. Ted, BYU's quarterbacks are well represented in our Hall of Fame. I mean, you look at we talk about Ty Detmer, Robbie Bosco, Steve Young, Jim McMahon. What is it about BYU, and, and, and why were they able to attract such good quarterbacks, and, and how were they able to perform so well consistently? Well, you know, it's interesting because I was with all last week. My wife and I were with Lavelle and his wife on a, on a cruise on the Atlantic coast. As a matter of fact, we got out of there just in time. But we talked a lot about that and about, it, you know, when he took over as a head coach, how that program had been down. and he may, I may be covering stuff he just covered, but he made a commitment that, we were going to throw the football. You know, they hadn't been winning there. And he said, we're going to, we're going to do something right. We're not going to try to do everything. And he made the commitment that we were going to throw. And then once he got through one quarterback or two, and I can't remember whether it was Gary Scheide or when Mark Wilson came in, but once those guys got there and established the fact they could win and they were winning thrown and they were committed, and Lavelle was not going to back down. And some people were saying you couldn't win if you couldn't have a running game. Well, he was committed to throwing. So no matter who his coordinator was, their commitment was to throw the football. So quarterbacks in high school, when they were recruiting them, they knew there was a firm commitment to a to a, a, a really a fine institution to go get your education, but they were committed to throwing, and quarterbacks loved to throw the ball. So they, they knew they wouldn't get caught up in, uh, in a change of offensive philosophy. And then once it got going and they had success and success passing, everybody they talked to was at least interested, even if they didn't get them. They were interested. Now, there's a lot more schools passing the ball now than there were back then. 
and I think that helped also. Uh, Ted, one last question. Let's go to 2012. Have you noticed the unbelievable amount of point scoring there is in college football today, or is it just me? It seems like some of these scores are just out of sight. Is there something well, different going on? No, Bruce, they are. I mean, th- two things, I think. Number one, some of the ones that get up in the 50s is because of the overtime rule. You know, it's just that they'll go overtime, and that distorts it a little bit. But even if we didn't have the current overtime rule, which we didn't have before, that they're, that they're open, the offenses are so much more open. You see a lot of teams in really what used to be only a third down offense. They're in the gun the whole game. They're in speed up attacks where they don't, they don't even huddle. So they get more plays in. They get more plays from a passing formation. They have a lot more receivers in the game. And so it's, it just has opened up the scoring, and the clock doesn't go as fast. So you get more plays and you score more points where if you're, if you're running the ball and grinding it out, the clock just keeps running and you're not going to get as many scores, number one, because it, that's not the style of a run game, and number two, because you don't get as many plays. So there's no question you are, you are right. I mean, there's, it's, uh, I mean, it's not unusual to see games in the 50s now. And a couple that went into the 70s, but uh, it's entertaining. You know, some people say, well, you're taking the defense out of the game, but really you haven't. I mean, there's still a lot of styles where they're running the football, too. That's longtime NFL and college coach Ted Tolner. Ted, thanks so much for joining us here today. Uh, My pleasure, Mark. Take care, you and Bruce.